I'm going to show you how you can how you can take dies. Uh, I have a bunch of the Potter dies here, and say you have you know a bunch of scrap metal, and you want to figure out a way so that you can use it uh, to make impressions in the die. And so what you do is you have a toaster oven, which I have over here, and I've got it um, set up so it's preheating. And then what you want to do is you want to get this polymer clay and make sure you read the directions on the back that you preheat the toaster oven. And then once we have these ready, we're going to pop them in there for 30 minutes at 275. So make sure you, <laughs> of course I forgot, wash your hands really good, get them really clean. Pick a color you like. We'll go with red because it's nice and bright. You want to take off some of this. You kind of want to knead it into like a ball. Let's see, we'll do we'll do three dies here. A little more. Okay, now what you want to do, this is like a sock and it's got talc in it. You could use baby powder, cornstarch, just want a fine powder, and you want to powder the dyes. Because what we don't want is we don't want the polymer clay sticking in there. And then when you think you got a piece that's about the size of what you're going to do, Kind of push it in there like that. See, this this is kind of a little bunny here. It's kind of long with ears, so we're going to kind of spread that out a little bit. And then what you want to do is you want to have like pieces of metal. They don't have to be round, and they don't have to be real nice like that. They could be kind of crude like that one. But you don't want to put any powder on it. And you want to set it on there and I like to get down where I can see from the side and then I'll push this down evenly so that it's about uh, I don't know 16 gauge like a millimeter and a half thick I'll do the same with the other two just like that kind of even pressure Push it down. Now, the, hopefully when we pull these up, the, the polymer clay will stick to the top piece of metal. And so that one stuck really good, so we got a great impression. So we'll set that down. And we got this one. Another great impression. The bunny, I don't know, we'll see. Oh, the bunny worked great, see that? Just like that. So you can see I got this little pan here which is uh, for the toaster oven. We're gonna take this, we're gonna put it in the toaster oven. And it's gonna be in there for 30 minutes. And then at 30 minutes, we'll take it back up again and start the next part of the of the video. So these are all done in the toaster oven. We're going to take them out. Might be a little bit hot. Find something to set it on. And then you can you can actually cool them down quickly in water. It's not going to hurt them. Cute little bunny. <laughs> okay, take the glove off. Okay, we're gonna put it in the water a little longer because it's a little warm. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. You should probably have a towel to dry these off instead of your shirt. So we're going to take them over to the bench. And I'm going to show you what to do with them next. So you can probably take a little knife and try and pop this off just like that. And I think the bunny would look great if we left some background on it. could probably uh, file this down into kind of a nice oval. So that right there doesn't look too bad. I think with the bunny, we're going to leave that one alone at this point. And then we'll grab another one. What a great impression. I mean, it's perfect. Now, it may be permanently on this metal. No. Nope. So this one, I find it's it's fairly good just to leave a little bit of a border. But you want to be kind of gentle with them. I mean, they're pretty strong, but... When you're done with this, make sure you clean your file off. Or even better yet, maybe have a designated file. The thing about this is, is you could do really intricate dyes and get an impression. And after we go from this step, we'll sand cast this. And then you could take this and put it back in the die, and if you have a press, you could get a, an amazing uh, impression that you probably wouldn't get before doing it other methods. So we'll just leave a little bit on the border. And another thing you could do, and I don't think we'll do this, but you could take, you could take a ball burr, and you could actually take out some from the back if you didn't want to have it quite as thick. Uh, that's an option too. So we'll set that one down. Oh, that one popped right off. Then we have this one. And a third way that this could be done is you could, you could actually take a saw. And again, I'd leave a little bit of a border. But you can cut this. Kind of like that, and then if you want, you can finish it a little bit. And so at this point, all three of these uh, can be used for sand casting. And I'll just show you really quick. Oops, that's not the right burr. You know, sometimes these things get stuck and if you just whack it on the bench pin, it looses them up. This is how you could, uh, so many things you could do, but you can lighten this up just by um, hollowing out the back a bit. It's almost like working with wax. But we'll just sand cast one of these so you can get the idea of how that's done too. 
So that'll be our next thing. We'll head over to the casting area. But this should have given you a, a good idea of the different things that can be done. All right. Okay, so we have our little bunny here. Now I'm going to show you how to sand cast. So what you do is you have your two sides of the flask and we're going to start off with the one that has the edge on it and that edge is going to face down take a little bit of clay this brand of clay is called red clay Very, very compact. Push it in there. Now you can either keep pushing it in there or you can take a hammer or the end of a mandrel. Pound that in there. And take something flat like this with an edge. Scrape it off. Okay, so now you want to take some talc. Make sure you have ventilation or a dust mask. Once we do that, then you can take your little bunny, put the bunny face down, Push it in there. You want to get it at least halfway down. Just like that. Now we'll take tilt that. Make sure this edge here is clean before you put the two halves together. Now we're going to add a little more clay. I don't like to hammer this part because I don't want to hit the edge of the, the flask and damage it. So for this part I just push it with a dowel. Or you could use your thumb. Scrape it off. Set that down flat and pull it apart, straight apart. We have a great impression of a bunny. You can see the, turn that around, the two halves right now. So we'll start with this side. use my thumb and create the funnel that the molten metal is going to pour down into. And then I'm going to take, we have to create a sprue. I like to take all the sharp edges and round them. Nice and smooth. Then we have to add vents. So we're going to go almost all the way to the piece, push down and pull back. Push down, pull back. Next part, we want to break through into the piece. What this is going to do is when you pour molten metal, it creates gases. 
and so any air and gases need to be expelled from the mold otherwise it won't fill you got to make sure they're nice and clean if they're obstructed it's not going to work so that's how that side looks, nice and clean. So we're going to set that aside and we'll start with this one. We'll add our funnel with our thumb. And the sprue is going to go about right there, so we're just going to lift that out. edges make sure there's no extra clay down in that channel and at this point this is ready to go together and if you look in there you can see that I'm a little off for the hole so it's a very simple we just kind of Study it a minute, figure out where we're off. I'm just going to make this side a little bit bigger there. And this side a little bit bigger here. Now when we put it together, We have a much better hole down there to pour the metal into. So the next thing we do is we hold these together. Get rid of that. We have this. We have a little stand here. We fit that in just like that and that holds it together nice and tight. We've got our little uh, crucible here, and we got the um, scrap metal. We're going to light our torch. Of course, I left the glove over there, but you know, that's okay. We'll just do it without the glove. It's not too hot. I'm gonna pull that apart. The back side is really nice. And on the front side, we have a nice little bunny. And so the next part will be to pickle this, get it cleaned up. And then at that point, we will cut off the sprue. And then we have uh, options from there as what to do with it. We've got a great casting. And you can see it's pretty much identical to this. Now, if I was going to do it again, I'd probably make the border a little bigger. And then you could actually drill a hole up here and put a jump ring on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way it is, you could solder a bale on top. That would be great. Um, but what we're gonna do is we'll take some flush cutters, take off where the vents were Then get our saw 
Now this is like a four-aught blade on here. Something a little bigger would probably be easier. I love this saw, it just cuts so straight. Take that. And so now we got these little extras on here and I think uh, we could cut them off. Maybe we won't go through the whole thing, but you could either cut those off or grind them off uh, and try and do it so you, you know, when I, when I cast this, I probably should have run the sprue more in the, between the two legs. <laughs> um, just because I, it wouldn't have got around the foot. <laughs> that didn't sound right, but... Um, but then you can take a file. I, again, I'd clean that off. You can use the other side, though. And you can file off where the little screws were. And you could uh, do all sorts of neat things with a background. Um, once this part is cleaned off, then you have a couple choices. I mean, if you're if you understand how to press it in the die, you could put that you could clean that off, put that back in the die, and you could repress it with your press, and you'd have a, a great impression right there and the other thing that's cool about this this little rabbit is I could take it and drill a hole through there they actually have it set up where you can raise beads and have a little bead set stone uh, that would be really cool um, but anyways I you can either go straight from the sand casting add some texture in here Maybe you could uh, antique it, or you could then clean that up, and you could press it in the die, and you could have a really great impression. So I think we'll probably end it there, and hopefully you learn something.